Archers are my favorite troop type in Rise of Kingdoms, in case you didn't know, even though I am literally called Archer Syndicate, and that means I know what it's like to be an Archer main. I literally only use Archers, I don't have anything else. So today, I'll be talking about Archers in terms of should you be an Archer main in 2024. I did a guide for this last year, it's a bit outdated now, and I will be updating it for the new commanders for all the new equipment and for the current position of archers. So if you're interested in whether or not you should be an archer main like myself in 2024, or maybe you're just considering being an archer main and you want to know if it's right for you, you should stick around till the end of the video. Now you might be wondering why would I really remake a guide about being an archer main and it is really because I saw a video and I don't know who made it now, I'm having a mind blank, but he made some really good points about archers that I definitely agree on and I think should be addressed in terms of being an archer main. That being said, I think the first key aspect you want to consider with being an archer main are the commanders good. I mean, before you main any troop type, they've got to have good commanders because if you become a leadership main in 2024, you're screwed. Let's be real, they have no good commanders. In terms of archers though, they've got decent commanders for their first, I want to say two to three marches. Now, I think the current issue with pretty much all troop types is that second march. The only troop that has a decent second march would be cavalry, because you've got that Hauche being with Belisarius. They're both relatively new commanders. They're both relatively strong, and it's all around a pretty decent march. Even Hauche being with William. For a second march, it's good. But overall, cavalry are a little bit struggling right now, but that is a different topic. Archers, though, they hold a similar issue. Their first march is Yulang with Herman is amazing. You should have it in any murder ball pretty much no matter what. There would be pretty much no exception to this. Even if you're not an archer main, you should have this march because it is just that good if we're being fully honest. But when it comes down to it, the second archer march is where you start to get a bit of an iffy feeling and it's going to be something like a Shajar Aldur with an Ashurbani Pal or you would run a Chio Yung with Shajar. That's pretty much what you'd be looking at for two archer marches as an archer main and it is a little bit on the fence almost to be fully honest. It's a bit of a weird march to be running if we're being fully frank. It's very new. It's very, very, I would say against what we normally see. And that means it's obviously going to be a bit more risky. And even then it's not the most OP march. I say it's a good march, Shajar with Ashurbani Pal and even Chia Young with Shajar. And they are good marches but they're not at that level of Zulang and Herman. And I think last year when I made this guide, archers were probably in a bit of a better position in terms of they had two really, really good marches. You had Zulang, and I think you might have had Herman at the prime. If not, you had Zulang with Boudicca, and then you had someone like a Henry with a YSG. It was a really good too much murder ball at the time, and it would trade extremely well pretty much all the time if you played the murder ball right, and we'll get into that a bit later. So that murder ball was crazy good. Now though, we're kind of in a position where it is, you get a really good first march, but that's not really being an archer main. If you want to main, you want to go for that second march, and you're in a bit of a weird situation. Now, Shajar with Ashurbani Pal and Chia Young is really good. I haven't used Chia Young myself, but I've heard it's good. And Shajar with Ashurbani Pal, I've used personally. It is definitely, sorry, not Ashurbani Pal. I've run Shajar YSG, but I have used Ashurbani Pal with her a bit. It is just a very good march. Even Shajar YSG is a very good second march. Another thing I do like about Archer Commanders, you can run Boudicca with YSG or Ashurbani Pal as your second march, and it also does work quite well. So you've got a bit of diversity there if you may already have one of those commanders. So I do see that being a good thing about being an Archer main. There's a lot of diversity with the commanders. Pretty much when you think about it, all the Archer commanders can work with pretty much anyone. Up until the release of Shajar, who kind of threw a spanner in the works there, we were looking at pretty much running anyone together. You could just pick out two commanders. I'm going to say YSG and even let's just go with, let's just go with Herman Prime. This is a really good first march. Herman's got defense and he's got AOE. YSG is going to boost his skill damage. You could even do YSG with Zulang. You could do Herman Prime with Henry. Pretty much anybody worked, even the most obscure pairings, which is something that was really good. It gave these commanders a lot of future potential because they're very broad and they're not really reliant on another commander. The only real exception being someone like Tamiris or someone like Artemisia who need weird pairings. But in most situations, Archers did not suffer from this problem, and that was something that I really liked about them and something I drove home. But nowadays, that's not really the case, and it definitely does kind of change the way you look at being an Archer main, because Shajar is not going to work with absolutely every Archer commander. I mean, she's not good with Boudicca. She's not good with Henry. She's probably... Oh, she's decent with Zulang. She's not good with Herman, from what I've seen. She's decent with Ashurbanipal. She's decent with YSG. So she's good with a few, or most the Archer commanders, 
but she's not good with some of the other archer commanders. So you'll definitely notice that a lot of the newer archers, they're a little bit more specific. They need slightly more niche, and uh, niche commanders at least, and that's definitely going to be a bit of an impact on them. So when it comes down to commanders for archers right now, it's not as good as a position as it used to be, at least last year. In terms of the overall commander gameplay for archers, and this is where I think the video I watched, and I forget who it is, it, I th it was someone who's been on Chisco's channel for a very long time. Maybe it was War Daddy. I think that might have been his name, War Daddy Chad, if I'm getting that right. He made a really good point that I think was very true about Archer Commanders. Archers used to be a must-have thing, and pretty much you would be an Archer main for one reason, the ridiculous DPS. Archers had the highest DPS in the game by a mile. At the release of YSG, there was no commander within any realm. Even Minamoto was not close to his DPS because he can just output stupid numbers. But when you look at his defense stats, I mean, he has no defense stats. So YSG is in that position where he used to be what all archers were like, stupidly good damage mid everything else. The damage though would make up for everything. And even if your march got sad faced, you'd probably still trade a one for one or an equal trade. But nowadays, something we've noticed with archers, especially now with the release of Shajar and even Jia Young, they aren't hitting as hard. And even if they are still hitting pretty hard, like Duelang and Herman Prime, other troop types are also hitting very hard. Infantry never used to deal five target AoEs. I don't think there was a single five target AoE commander for infantry until the release of Liu Che. He's going to be the first ever five target for infantry, unless I'm missing someone. But from what I can see here, he is the first ever five target. There was no one with ridiculously high skill damage until that of William Wallace. Infantry always had skill damage. They always had DPS, but they were more focused on normal damage, counter attack, and obviously they still had their skill damage. Cavalry were more focused on just doing quick hidden runs, often single target commanders. Nowadays, they've seen a bit of a rise in single target, but you've got a commander like Joan Prime, ridiculous AoE, stupidly high damage, Nevsky, really high amounts of damage, massive skill damage bonuses. So I think that archers have lost that, I want to call it a comparative advantage. Compared to the other troops, they used to be really good at DPS, you would run them for DPS. Now they're just kind of a different version of DPS with one very noticeable drawback. Archers are slow. They're so, so, so fucking slow. They don't move. That's just the real truth behind it. Archers are commanders who just cannot walk fast enough in the open field and they're going to get destroyed. And they're super squishy on top of all that. So they've lost their advantage of that really big DPS. And I've noticed it myself. I used to get better trades when other troop types didn't deal as much damage. But we've seen a rise in more damage in other troop types, which isn't a bad thing. It's just a different thing. And my archers have been getting noticeably slightly worse trades. Obviously, I've micromanaged the crap out of my marchers because I'm a pure archer account. And if you are an archer main, you can do the same thing and you will still get good results. But you could still get better results by being a mixed troop main. And I'll talk about that a bit later. So archers right now, they're in a bit of a weird position, just commanders for archers overall in general, where their damage isn't as amazing as it used to be. And Shaja and Chio Young are just completely different to anything we've ever seen in that regard. They're not really focused on damage. It's kind of just how tanky can I be and still get a good trade and they do it pretty well. But that being said, it's too new for it to be something to fully rely on. This could be a one-off commander release thing. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it is something we see forever. And that's what I was kind of hoping for something a bit new. And this is kind of the case here. And I know a lot of people are saying the fact that they heal is really bad. Healing in this situation, and I might make a video on this, isn't that bad because they're healing a march that's actually going to be able to hold its own. If you're healing a march that's losing a battle, you get worse trades. If you're healing a march that's not losing, your trades will be better because you are going to be dealing more damage since you will have more troops. Pretty much as simple as that. But when it comes down to it, Shaja and Chia Young are just very different and they're not those massive DPS cannons which archers really used to be and were what we really used to see. Now, moving on from the commander side of archers, which is obviously the most important, and I think we've gone over it pretty well, the next real thing to consider is other stuff that archers are really good at. This is some stuff that if you're an archer main, you can really benefit from. And the first one is just in terms of specialization. If you choose one troop, you're going to be able to benefit from city themes better. City themes will give you certain amounts of attack or even health buffs that you're just going to get onto your troop types at the cost of a number other troops. So you can see I've got an archer health buff at the cost of a 5% cavalry attack debuff. Doesn't matter. I don't use cavalry. Doesn't even affect me literally at all. So if you're an archer main and you're running at a city skin like this, it's just pure bonuses for you and it's really good stats. 
Another thing that really just helps boost archers is the Ottoman civilization because it is ridiculously strong. There is nothing stronger than the Ottoman civilization in the game in terms of the amount of stats it gives you for the open field and also in terms of how good it's going to make your archers. The only real thing right now with the Ottomans is they're not too good with Shaja and Chia Young just because they're dealing true damage and skill damage will not buff that. But that being said, it is still a really good civilization for other archer marchers. And even then, if you're not even getting the skill damage bonus, the special unit, the health and the march speed alone are just worth it. It's ridiculously strong. The Ottoman Empire is definitely one of those things that really accelerates archers. You might think it's not that big of a deal, but Chiskel did run tests once. And the difference between running just the Ottoman civilization and then doing a 1v1 with someone who didn't have the special civilization or had their own special civilization like he fought some cab marches with Germany, and then he used the Ottoman. It was like a 2k extra save win difference. Now, this was a very long time ago. Definitely could have changed since then, but it is definitely an amazing aspect of being an archer main, and that really hasn't changed, I would say, if I had to guess, since last year. Ottoman civilization didn't get a nerf. It's still just as strong as it is, and all the special units are still the exact same. So the Ottoman civilization is a real big benefit, I would say, to being an archer main that you can really benefit from. So if you're running the Ottomans, you're going to get crazy amounts of kills by just having a better civilization that's going to benefit not only all of your marchers, because you will be running archers, or at least most of them, you'll probably still run an infantry and a cav, but also it's going to benefit you more than it would another player. Another real benefit I would say to being an archer main is that we do see archer commanders, I would argue, released at the best time in the commander cycle. They come just after infantry, and then just before Siege and Leadership. This is the best time because you're going to be able to benefit from the newer commanders and their meta reign, because usually new commanders do get a very nice meta time where they're literally the best in the game. You're going to be able to benefit from it for a bit longer. Unlike someone like Infantry or Cavs, the second a Cav commander release, you're waiting for the next cycle. It's going to be Infantry, who will most likely counter them. Even if it doesn't counter them hardcore, it's going to be a small counter, and that counter is going to reduce the effectiveness of that march ever slightly. Infantry, they release, you get Archers next, they're going to do the same thing. But Archers, they release, then you're going to get Siege and Leadership, then you're going to get Cavalry. That definitely is just a small bonus of being an Archer main. You do get, in my opinion, a better period in the commander release cycle just because you get more time of being the strongest march. Siege and leadership are very niche right now. They don't really counter anything too hard. And even if they do become hardcore meta, they're not going to counter archers any more than they would counter any of the other troop types. So archers are, in my opinion, the best position in the commander release cycle for when they do release. Now, this could change. We've seen a bit of weird stuff for the commander release cycle. Great example, Ragnar. Don't know why he got released, but he's just in the game now. So it's just going to be just keep in mind that could change from now between next year when I might remake this guide if I do. So do keep that in mind. It is a current thing as of October 2024, but it is a very nice thing to have as an archer main, and it is also really good. Now, the last thing I would talk about when it comes down to maining archers, and this is something that I put down last year as the most important thing to think about. If you want to be an archer main, you need to think about one very key aspect, and that is your playstyle. If you are running archers, you need to be patient. Some people say you should be aggressive. I've never ever gotten good trades running archers as an aggressive troop type. You just need a hell of a lot of patience. You need to wait for that one guy to get slightly out of his murder ball, and then you're just going to absolutely nuke him. And if you do that right, you'll pretty much never get a bad trade. I mean, obviously, eventually you will do something wrong. We're all pretty much human, unless you're literally a robot, and you're going to misread the open field, or your marches are going to go into the enemy murder ball, or you're just going to lag and you're going to get wrecked. So that is for any troop main. I don't care what main you are, you're never going to get always positive trades, unless you're a mega whale who's playing at the same speed of a free-to-play player. So in those situations, you're going to get good trades. You can see here, patience just pays off. So when you're an archer main, if you're willing to be patient and you're willing to read the open field and think tactically, but also think slowly, you will get good trades. Obviously, like you can see here, you will still lose some trades. You will still get bad trades. I might have been swarming a garrison in this, but it actually I got swarmed down. But when it comes down to it, you're never, ever going to get full trades, 100% amazing trades with all your troop types, but you can definitely get get, in my opinion, more exaggerated trades if you play archers really well. If you're able to micromanage them and control the way that they move, you will get much better trades. Another thing with archers is it is a bit field dependent. If you're losing on the open field, you're going to get wrecked. Your archer marchers are just done for. You'll never get a positive trade. It's going to be like once in a blue moon, if that. So if you're getting destroyed on the field, you're never, ever going to get a good trade. Archers are really more of a thing that you want to run when your kingdom is 
in their uptime, in their prime. So if I'm online during my kingdom's uptime, I'm going to get stupid trades. I'll get like 800%. I'll get 1,000% trades, 300, 200% trades, like they're going out of fashion. But the second we hit our downtime, there goes all my trades. I'm getting like 70, 80, 90% maybe breaking even, the occasional good report, but it is just not as consistent. So archers, they do have that reliance on your kingdom. Your kingdom is going to need to be there with you to fight. It's not one of those things you can just go take them out in the field and start swarming people down. It doesn't work as good as infantry and cavalry would in that situation. Just because archers, they're almost like a supporting DPS march nowadays where they do good damage and they're really strong, but you need to have other people or other marchers there to back you up and allow you to really do that damage before you do get killed off because they are still squishy. So if you're willing to be patient and you're willing to read the open field and also stick with your kingdom, archers can be a really good troop type for you. The main reason I use them is because when I play video games like this, really when I play any video game, I'm a patient player. I don't have very good reflexes. Let's be realistic. If you compare people to other people around my age, they're playing Call of Duty and they're jumping through walls and they're shooting people. But I don't know how to do that. I think archers are very good, semi-slow paced. Obviously, Rise of Kingdoms, when it comes down to open field fighting, is still hectic. There's no like, oh, I'll just like sit here for five minutes and wait for somebody. It's still going to be a back and forth, back and forth. But you're not going to be as aggressive as you would with an infantry or a cavalry march because you can't afford to make those mistakes with archers. So when it comes down to it, I think a patient play style where you rely on your kingdom and you are trying to play and fight with your kingdom is going to give you the best possible outcome as an archer main. If you prefer a more aggressive play style where you're just pretty much slamming yourself into your opponents and you're playing really aggressive, you might run into the enemy murder ball a little bit just to chase down a march, archers aren't going to be your best decision there. You need to be a tactical thinker who's willing to take a little bit of risk sometimes, but mainly you're willing to just try and rage chain, slowly build up your rage, and then drop an active skill. Slowly rage chain, drop an active skill. If you want to do big active skills, archers might not be the best option for you. They're just a slow build up where you smash your opponents, but gradually over time. So that's when I think archers will really shine. And if you don't really like that, they're not going to be a troop main for you. Do I think you should never run a march? No, you can still run Zulang and Herman. It's still good. It can be very aggressive this march just because of how high its DPS is. But if you're running two, three, even four archer marches, you need that patience. You need to be at least quite confident in the way that you fight with the open field and you need to develop your fighting style. I think that's a bit weird to say. It's kind of like, why would I say develop your fighting style? Pretty much just get used to how you like to play with archers. Do you like to be aggressive? Maybe it works for you. Do you like to be passive more like I do where I can pick and choose my opponents almost and try and get the best trades? That is going to be the best idea. So the more tactical you play, I think the more benefit you get out of archers. But if you just like to be really aggressive and constantly be slamming into your opponents, I think infantry and cavalry would be a much better option at that point. So now the final question is, should you main archers in 2024? And that means when I say main, I'm talking three or more marchers. I think the answer is, for most people, nah. I mean, archers are good, but I don't know if they're at that point right now where I would risk maining archers. Unless you've got an account that's weird like mine, where you've already gone down that route, you can continue it. I don't see why you can't, but it is always good to A, at least have some other troop types. And I do think that everyone should have other troop types. I just don't listen to my own advice. And B, I don't think that maining archers will be the best troop at the moment. I've seen better reports, and at least I think infantry right now are pulling better reports if you do main them. They've got a lot of new commanders coming in. They got Ragnar as well, which is a quick little bonus. He is a definitely a decent commander from what we can see. So I would say that it would come down to archers only being a good option for you if you prefer that passive playstyle. Their commanders right now are not that amazing for me to justify maining them. Their buffs, while good, the civilization buffs are very good. It's again, not that amazing for me to fully justify maining them. And then there's really nothing else that really would drive you to main them unless you like their playstyle. Maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago, when the commanders were much more succinct and they served that purpose of just doing DPS, I would say, yeah, main archers, it's a good idea. But now I'm not 100% sure whether it would be worth maining them in terms of just because of their commanders. I would say no. If you like their playstyle, though, archers can work. But overall, I would recommend probably maining something like infantry or cavalry if you prefer to be a bit more aggressive and you don't like to sit around every now and again in your murder ball waiting for a good time to attack. Now, if you enjoyed today's video, I just want to ask you guys for a small favor, and that is do please consider subscribing to the channel. I try to put out a good archer guide pretty much every now and again. I put one out about once a year in terms of whether or not you should main or continue maining archers. 
So if you want to see more archer guides from the most in-depth archer channel out there, I highly recommend subscribing. Not only does it support me and helps me make videos and also tells me that you guys like these videos, it is also just a very nice thing to see people subscribing to my channel and I do greatly appreciate it. Other than that, I just want to say I thank you all for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.